Hi everyone and wel welcome all of you. Um, we still have about two to three minutes, so let's just keep on waiting for everyone to join in. Hi everyone. Um, so I think we're just about to start. I see some people raise their hands. If you have a question, would you please um, try and, okay, I got it. So is the audio good? Everyone can hear me? All right, nice. So um, hi everyone, my name is Dahlia. On behalf of the ideas, I'm very excited to have you all today. Uh, today's topic is web scrapping with request, beautiful SOAP and Yelp's API. With our wonderful speaker, he's been with us about three or four, four years for now. His name is Juan Vasquez. Uh, big thanks to everyone who can join us today. And for those who are just watching the video on our YouTube channel, well, hope you can join us online next time. Before we jump into the webinar itself, let me just briefly remind you what is ideas and stuff like that. So IDEAS is International Data Engineering and Science Association, and it's a nonprofit organization based in LA, California. Well, our mission is to bridge the gap between academia and industry. So we kind of basically are very excited about data science, machine learning, AI, and blockchain as well. So we are sharing this kind of enthusiasm with others, as well as we're trying to connect those passionate people from data science background, data analyst background, with the people from academia and industry. This is our roadmap. We started in 2016 and we were, are moving very rapidly. We're hosting conferences. We have a lot of hackathons as well as meetups at different uh, companies and universities across the country. Um, so if you haven't checked out our website yet, the one that is coming is data science training with Python. Uh, which is going to be in LA, California on February 8th and 9th. So go and check it out. Um, so this is our like photo gallery, the very first one, so-called conference at USC campus. Um, this is New York Blockchain Leadership Connect. This is the Chicago one. Um, again, we are holding a lot of conferences, a lot of um, different uh, hackathons, different leadership connects and stuff like that. This is the 2019 SoCal conference at Convention Center. Um, and the one that, I mean, the one that we had last year, we had almost 200 speakers and a lot of people came to share the um, expertise. Um, all right, um, as I told you, we have a lot of meetups at different campuses and universities. So if you are a student, don't make sure you, you don't miss that. All right, this is our website. So again, if you haven't done so, join ideas.org for weekly newsletters and for the information about the webinars and different hackathons and different um, training sessions and stuff like that. The QR code that you see at the bottom of the screen is our YouTube channel. So all the webinars we usually post there. So if you missed something, just go ahead and click the YouTube channel and you will see all the videos that we have for about five years. All right, so now let me introduce our wonderful speaker for today, 
Juan solves Didi's problem with the help of big data analysis and visualization, as well as data science. He has been a in the data team of City of Los Angeles almost five years for now. He is a former advertising tech salesperson turned data analyst working toward data science. Well, he is an entrepreneur and a leader with expertise in SQL, Python, business intelligence, GI tools, well, a lot of things. Um, well, he's also a strategic communication person and product development person. So just like a huge combination with a very successful um, city of Los Angeles professional um, data science person. So thank you, Juan. Um, I'm passing the whole presentation to you. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And we're very excited to have you today. Can't wait to start the webinar. Great, thank you, Dahlia. I appreciate the introduction and uh, I'm very thankful for everyone that decided to join uh, us today. It's Saturday, you know, you all could do, be doing a million other things, but you're choosing to be here with us, working on your professional education, on your careers, on your skill set. And uh, I definitely commend you all for that. And thank you for your time and, and attention. Just want to give a shout out to Dahlia and the entire IDS organization. As you mentioned, I've been a, a member of it and, and uh, have been active in different ways for a number of years. It's a place I go to learn, to meet other like-minded people, other professionals in this field. And I will actually be at the data science training uh, in February. Uh, I need to work on my machine learning and my algorithms. And so uh, I hope some of you all uh, are, are going to be there. All right, so uh, with that, I'm going to be spending roughly 40, 40 minutes, 45-ish minutes uh, going into web scraping with, uh, we're going to scrape Yelp and we're going to scrape the yellow pages using uh, two different technologies. Uh, at this point, I'm going to share my screen with you all. We're going to look at like two or three slides, not, not a lot, to kind of frame our conversation a little bit. And then we're just going to get into a little bit of coding. Uh, I think at the end, there'll be some, some room for Q&A. Uh, I, I wanna couch this though. As Dahlia mentioned, I'm a former advertiser who went to school for advertising, who now for the past few years has been coding more and more, has been getting into data science and into programming. Uh, and so I am kind of like, I learn on the job. So I guarantee that you all who have been coding for longer than me are probably gonna see areas to optimize my code uh, and you know, please do so. Like, if you end up, I'll share links to my my notebooks later. Feel free to remix it. Uh, but I I do want to acknowledge that like I'm a blend. I'm still learning, and so I might not have all the foundational terms. But uh, I I do hope to share a good bit of value with you all. So with that in mind, let me now share my screen. Oh, there we go. I'll share this one. All right, you should all be seeing my web scraping header. I'm going to go full screen there you go dahlia can you confirm that you're all seeing it fine yeah Maybe. it's fine Perfect. excellent okay all right uh, you've already heard enough about me i also teach i teach at a school called general assembly i'm on twitter at at juan is uh my wife and i bought a home earlier in the year and we're actually going to uh, an lafc match later today for anyone that follows soccer uh, super excited and so just a little bit about me um, this is what we're going to briefly talk about. Why should we scrape? What is kind of scraping? And then we're going to scrape Yelp and scrape the yellow pages. Uh, and so scraping is basically using technology, using code to access data and content and to bring it into an environment that you yourself can control. You can uh, blend it with your existing data sets. You can analyze it independently. Uh, you can build workflows and models around it just like any other data source you would use. Uh, I have found two main avenues that scraping is pretty helpful. The first is using it to build content. So bringing it into whatever content and data you already have, and then using that to attract traffic and build awareness for the things you work on. So you could uh, scrape data and build something that is then embedded on your website, that is included in newsletters, that is used as social media content. So that's one lane. You want to kind of bring awareness from the public into your work and you can scrape data to enhance and enrich your content. The other one is really for internal intelligence. And so it is scraping so that your teams are smarter, so that your people have access to more knowledge. If you are doing 
data science and machine learning, you can build models that use some of this data. If you are going to be using it for commercial reasons, you, you definitely have to kind of be aware of what is legal or not and not create liabilities for yourselves. Or if you are creating liabilities, at least be aware of it. Um, and so it can be those kind of two main lanes is, is where I've seen uh, web scraping be helpful when you want to build content to engage an audience or when you want to be a more intelligent organization and you want to bring in external data in a way that, that you can work with. Uh, we're going to be using a number of technologies. We're going to be using the request library. We're going to be using uh, beautiful soup to handle HTML. Uh, requests we'll use to create web service calls and, and to kind of bring in data into our, our environment. And then we're going to be using Yelp's APIs to scrape Yelp specifically. Beautiful soup we'll use for the yellow pages. Uh, let me see. Nothing, nothing here. We're going to use a, a, few, a few kind of strategies. We're going to use F strings. We're going to use for loops. And ultimately, we're going to want to scrape our data and put it into a data frame that we can kind of explore a little bit. Um, don't worry about that. OK, let's jump into it. The first thing we're going to scrape is Yelp. And so Yelp, uh, most of you might know, it's a, it's a really large international business directory. Of course, not every business in your region, in your city will be on Yelp. These are largely businesses that cater towards customers. So if, like business to business entities might not be on Yelp, uh, but you can get access to a pretty exhaustive list. So this is Yelp. I'm sure you all are familiar with Yelp in some capacity. Yelp has uh, a, a great kind of developer engine and organization. And so to successfully scrape Yelp data, you have to create a Yelp developer account. You have to access and create an, an application that looks a little bit like this. You just have to give your application a name and a few other things. Um, but it, it is how they manage how many uh, you know, hits and how much usage they see for their, their data. So they, they definitely want to manage that. So you have to create that. Uh, and once you have an account, then you can, you know, start your own coding fun. So the very first thing we want to do, we want to use Yelp. The, the use case I want to play uh, with for you all here is uh, we want to figure out what organizations around a half mile radius offer free Wi-Fi. And so I've kind of chosen two arbitrary locations in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, and we just want to see if we can identify the locations that offer free Wi-Fi and get information about those locations in a way that we can work with it. So that's the use case. This could be something that nonprofits use if they perhaps want to do any sort of organizing and they need places where there is Wi-Fi. Um, you know, you might want to do something that you want to, you know, if, if you don't have access to internet at home, where can you point them to? Things like that. So let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to be coding and using Google Colab. And so Google Colaboratory is basically Jupyter Notebooks turned into the Google Drive. And so you can access Google Colab just like any other Google Doc. You can easily share documents to people. As you see here, once we code this up, I'll be sharing the link and dumping it into the chat. Uh, and just like any item in your drive, you can access it anywhere. So for uh, a lot of the coding that I do that it's going to be scripts that I well, might want to access at home or at the office. I'm, I'm coding up in here a, a good bit. Highly recommend it for you all. Uh, at the very top, I just some, have some Yelp documentation, developer documentation. And so I actually want to explore that with you all. I want to identify some of the things that we really need to account for and how we structure some of our code and, and what we get access to. Uh, so the API we'll be using is the business search API. It gives us up to uh, about a thousand businesses for, for a particular set of search criteria. And I think it can give you up to about 50,000 or so listings in a day, I believe, if you vary up your search criteria. And basically what we're going to want to do is define a set of parameters and then pass that into a request. And uh, then we can use that request to you know, scrape the listings and turn the listings into, into a data frame that we can analyze a little bit better. And so there's, there's a handful of parameters that we're going to, that I'm going to point out that we're going to use in our queries. 
And so the first one is going to be the, the term that we want to look for. And so we're going to use free Wi-Fi. We're going to use the term free Wi-Fi as a string. Uh, we're going to use the location parameter to define an exact address. Uh, if you had latitude and longitude as something you wanted to use, you could use that. We're also going to use radius to define the area of search. And so it is, it is in meters and uh, we're going to do about 805 meters, which is roughly a half a mile based on my Google search. Uh, radius, we're also going to use limit. As you can see, the default is 20. The maximum is 50. And so we're first going to do a small pilot scrape, a, a mini scrape, to see what data we get. Uh, but we'll be using limit. And then when we want to scrape hundreds of listings, we're going to have to use offset to effectively have our code step through pages since the maximum number of results is 50. We basically have to step through results in waves of 50. Uh, there's a few other things you can include. There's attributes that you can include in, in your parameters that you know, have a touch on accessibility, uh, gender neutral bathrooms related to, to gender equity and, and things like that. Uh, so you can definitely kind of get more intricate with your searches. So a few of the, of the things we're gonna be for sure using Let's now, with that in mind, start coding up a little bit. And so the, the notebook that I have set up here, actually, I'll go ahead and share it in case folks might want to code along. Just make sure you make a copy of it. I'm dropping this into our chat right now. Ooh, hold on, how do I do this? Uh, Juan, make sure yeah. once, you, once you type the link, there's like option to send it all panelists or all panelists and attendees. Oh, excellent. Good call. Okay, All I right. saw it. All panelists and attendees. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see that. Uh, this is our Yelp notebook. One thing to note, you're going to need your own developer key to use this. Okay, so at some point, you have to create a Yelp developer account, which will give you a key. And that's what we'll go into our key variable here. All right, so uh, I've shared some resources with you all. I've kind of defined some of the parameters we'll be using. At this point, let's go ahead and first set up our libraries. Then we're going to set up our credentials. Uh, and then we're going to do one initial, we're going to define our parameters, run one initial uh, scrape. We're going to e explore those results together. And then we're going to scale that scrape by scraping two different locations across hundreds of listings. And then uh, we'll explore that a little bit. We're gonna package that up into a data frame and then explore that data frame and uh, take a look at what listings have the most reviews and the ratings. So just a little bit of exploration there together. All right, so there's a number of libraries that we're going to need. We're going to need the request library i'm going to alias that we're going to need numpy to create a range and you're going to see where that comes in a little later we're going to need pandas to turn our response into a data frame oh, oh sorry i got distracted by the chat i'm not going to pay attention to the chat right now uh, we also need, uh, um, actually, we're not going to use Seaborn for this one uh, or Matplotlib, but we will need iter tools, actually. We're going to need product to create a few tuples for ourselves. So a request is going to give us a, a web call. NumPy is going to help us create a range of numbers. Pandas is going to help turn our response into a data frame and product from iter tools is also going to help us create our, our tuples or our, yeah our tuples. so let's go ahead and set that up for ourselves make sure everything is running smoothly cool we're good to go and now we need to define a few things so we need to create a url variable for ourselves we're eventually going to feed that into the response uh, you for that you really need to pull this from the yelp documentation uh, I believe that's going to be up in our right here. So we're going to be making a call to this URL. Sorry, I'm going to bring that in there. So 
like single quotes for my strings. My key, I don't mind sharing it here because this is my demo key, but you will need your own. You know, it's not a good practice to share keys like this publicly, but I trust you all, we're amongst friends. So I have my URL, I have my key, and then I have a headers variable, which is a dictionary that's gonna feed in my key into my response. And so now that we have our credentials set up, let's go ahead and run our very first scrape. And so for that, we need to do a few things. The first thing is we need to define some parameters. And these parameters are gonna be passed through as a dictionary. And here, uh, we're gonna pull on those terms that I identified earlier. We're gonna define a location, a limit, a term, and a radius. And so for location, I want 1200 West 7th Street, Los Angeles, California 900, I think it is 17. Our next parameter is going to be limit. And here, let's just look at the first, let's just get three results. Let's get three results. Uh, the term we're gonna be searching for is free Wi-Fi. And let's look for a radius of 805 meters around this location. Again, you, if you want to expand that, you either have to be familiar with, with meters or um, you know, Google it and kind of see what that's like. So we have our parameters variable. Uh, we're now going to want to create a response variable that uses requests and that gets, oh, I didn't run this cell up here. I'm going to have to run that. There you go. Uh, so we have our request that is getting for us this URL with headers that pulls on our headers variable. So it points to that. You can just put that in there. And then we need the per to define the parameters for our search. And this is going to point back to the variable that we decide that we define above the parameters. There we go. We have this, we got our response. Uh, and now, oh, close that up. Um, I want to save my response as a JSON. And let's, let's walk through this together. There we go. All right. So let's look at our code again. We define our parameters. We wanted three listings that offer free Wi-Fi, uh, one a half mile around this location. We got our response. We saved it into the data variable as JSON, and now we're just showing that for ourselves. Uh, we see here that our response comes as a dictionary, which has a whole bunch of businesses in it within it. Uh, we have three items. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of your response, you have the total number of listings available for the call, which is 37. So there are 37 locations that meet my criteria, you know, given the, the range that I set. Um, in my prep, I actually checked all of the URLs to confirm that all of the results actually do offer free Wi-Fi to kind of validate the, the term. And, and it always works. So uh, I do trust that our term of free Wi-Fi does work. And so I wanna point out a few key attributes that we wanna ultimately pull out to bring into our, our data frame. So you're gonna notice that every business ends up having uh, a few things that we need. Hold on, let me make sure I have my notes set up properly here. Give me one second. Go. Uh, so let's walk through this together. We see that uh, all, each, each listing ends up being uh, listed within the dictionary. And so we're going to want things like the name. We're going to want things like 
the location address, uh, although we're gonna end up pulling the display address, we're gonna pull this one so that we get an entire address and we don't get it piecemeal. Uh, here's the name actually that we're gonna be pulling from the listing. We're gonna be pulling the phone number, uh, we'll pull the rating, and we're also gonna pull the review count. You could of course pull in any of the attributes that you see here. So we're gonna do this uh, for each of the listings. But now let's go ahead and, and scrape hundred as many listings up as we can using the attributes that we just identified. And so uh, treating this as our initial kind of sample scrape, let's think about what we need to do to, to scale up our scrape. And I'm sure there are other ways to optimize the script, uh, but the way I'm approaching it is we're first going to create a list that has two addresses. Then we're going to create a list that has steps in steps of 50 going from zero to a hundred that way we can step through the listings or zero to 500. Uh, and then we're going to create a list of, of the tuples that are the result of our address and our offset coming together. So once we have these tuples, we're going to iterate through them uh, by running them through a for loop where basically that response that we generated is going to be generated for all of their combinations. Uh, the results are going to be brought into a list of lists and then we're going to bring that list into a data frame, which then we can, we can hopefully seamlessly explore. And so let's do this together. My notes. Uh, let's see. The addresses that we'll use will be the same one that we used before. And then we'll just add one more. Use this one. Then I'm going to drop in the city hall address, 200 North Spring Street. Angeles, California, 90012. Now we need, this is where NumPy comes in for us. So we want, uh, I know we only have a, like 37 listings for one address. Maybe there won't be hundreds altogether, but sometimes you might want that. And so here really what we want is a range that starts at zero, goes up to 500 in steps of 50. And now we can create a list of tuples using product where we bring together our addresses and offset. And let's check out our first few tuples here. The first, let's just check out the first five. Let's see what we get here. Oh, where? That's not right. Sorry. There we go. And so here we see that effectively what we have is a list of tuples that gives us an address along with a step. Uh, we'll just do this. We'll see with our second address, we have a similar situation where we have the address and then a corresponding step. And so now we want to build on this. We want to iterate through these tuples to run a multitude of, re of requests and then bring all those listings into uh, one data frame. So let's go ahead and, and walk through this together. We're gonna start with an empty list. We're gonna call it listings. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and define the columns. I did this for us ahead of time. Define the eventual columns of our data frame which will be the name, the reviews, the rating, the address, latitude, longitude, and phone. And now we can start defining our for loop, right? So we're gonna, again, be iterating through our tuples here. And so for every address and step in tuples, we want the parameters for, um, Letters. Let me make sure. Hold on. Let's call these search parameters. Make sure we don't have any issues. 
Uh, for our search parameters, we're going to define this dictionary again. And so here, just like we did before, the location is going to be the address. The term is always going to be free Wi-Fi. Oh, forgot my comma. Term, uh, what else do we need? We need a radius of half a mile around each of those locations. And we need to receive our listings in waves of 50. And as, oh, not a period. And as we discussed, we need to step through these listings using the offset parameter. And that's where our step comes in. All right, so we have our search parameters defined here to kick off our for loop. And now we are going to want to create a response that gets for us the URL, our headers, go to headers, our params, point to ooh, our search params. We're going to package up the JSON response of this into another variable. JSON. Let me give myself a little more breathing room here. And now we need an another inner inner loop that iterates through our raw data here. And so we're going to have a for loop where for every business, remember that our, our response is this JSON object that is a dictionary full of businesses. So we're going to want to call that business. So for every business in our raw data variable businesses, we want a list name, business name, re the reviews is going to be the business review count. We need ratings. Need a rating. We're going to put a location here. Uh, just referencing the way our responses come in, we get a location. And that location has a display address. But if we check it out, our display address, where are you? Location, display address. The full address is an actual item within the list. So we need to access that one explicitly. So we just really need the first item from there. Um, actually, we don't need latitude and longitude. If you did want to ultimately map this, you might want the latitude and longitude. Uh, location, but we do want the phone number. Let's get the phone number. Business. Oh, I think it's display phone. Display phone. Cool. So we have identified the attributes we want. Now, as part of our loop, what we want here is we have this empty list called listings. We want to append to it all of the lists that we instantiated up here. So name, reviews, rating, location, phone. We have that. And now, as we exit our data frame, or as we exit our for loop, we can define a data frame or instantiate a data frame that uses our listings data. Is that what I call it? Listings? Yep. It uses our listings. It's going to use the name as its index. 
and the columns will be defined by our columns variable up here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. We're good. These are calls. Let's, uh, as a way to check this, we're gonna check for how many total records we have. And then let's go ahead and check the first few records. All right, so uh, let's see if this works. Let's go ahead and run it and see if it worked for us. All right, search parameters, parameters, two S's. Excellent. So we have 97 records. We see that we have our data frame here. We have some names, some reviews, a rating, address, and phone number. I'm a 12% battery. Give me one second. Let me just plug up. All right, uh, and so now we have a data frame. Let's just do a little bit of exploration to see what data we got out of here. So let's, uh, let's just explore this for a second. I wanna just be able to see its info oh. and also describe, describe. Let's see what we see here. Complete data, we see that our reviews is an integer, our ratings is a float. We also see that uh, the mean number of reviews is a little above 400, that's kind of interesting. And we also see that uh, a little bit of how it kind of splits out. We see that there's a pretty high average rating, that's kind of interesting. And now let's just quickly take a look at which organizations have the most uh, reviews and the most ratings. Okay, so let's check this out. We're just gonna sort by reviews first. And let's see what that looks like. Then let's take a look at rating. Is it rating? Yeah, rating. And then we'll look at this. And so we see that. Uh, Philippe, Philippe's the original, excellent original pantry, some of the ones that have the highest reviews, and then some of the uh, listings that have the highest rating. So a little bit of exploration there. Uh, and now let's build ourselves a quick, his, a quick histogram to see uh, how these two metrics, reviews and ratings, kind of spread out and distribute themselves amongst the listings. And so here, we're just gonna do our rating. We're gonna call a histogram on that. See what that looks like. And then let's do the same for reviews. And we get a histogram that helps to see that a whole bunch of listings actually have, you know, probably less than 500 reviews and then they kind of spread themselves out. So that's a little bit of how we scrape Yelp. You all now have the link to uh, this notebook. You have the code, I'm just gonna remove my key from here, make sure you get your own uh, as part of your uh, Yelp developer account. Um, and so now let's jump to beautiful soup. Okay, so we've used Yelp's API to scrape Yelp's listings. Let's now use beautiful soup 
to scrape uh, yellow pages. I know we're coming up on like the last five minutes before we open up for Q&A. So I'm not gonna make this one super in depth. I might actually just show my solution. Um, yellow pages, it's another business directory. If you are to look for something like legal, let's see what results we get here. And so for any term, you get some results. Beautiful soup is here to help us uh, walk and parse through HTML. Oh, what's going on? And so we need to be able to inspect that for ourselves, of course. Let me close some windows. Things are freezing up on me. There we go. Okay. And so um, here we're going to use beautiful soup effectively grabs a web request, turns it into uh, an HTML object that can then be parsed and be iterated through and turned into a data frame, uh, much like we did with our for loop using Yelp's API. And so some of the things that I would want to do once I'm inspecting the page here, uh, let's use our cursor here to identify the exact HTML objects we'd want to pull. So from the H2 object with N class, we would want to grab that text, for example. Uh, all of these items, each of these listings, is in its own container. Uh, and so we are gonna create a response that first pulls all of these together and then we'll walk through that response together. Let me get this going over here. All right, let's try it. So for this, we're gonna need requests just like last time. We're gonna need a beautiful soup. No second. Gonna need beautiful soup. Soup. And we're gonna actually we're not gonna have time to package this up into a data frame. We'll just create a response and see what we get. Uh, and so here now we need to create a response object that pulls from a website, of course. And so here we have our URL. I need this. Our URL is going to be this page. And now we need a response. is going to get this URL. We need an HTML variable that gives us the text of this response. And now we're going to use that HTML object. Ooh, that doesn't make sense. This makes sense. Uh, we get to define our beautiful soup object. So define soup and now call beautiful soup on it. Be beautiful soup. Uh, and we're just going to pass through it the HTML doc. And then let's let's see what we get. Uh, And so we get the entire page, the entire, entire page. All right, that's freaking messy. And so we don't need all of that, but we know that we need some things. And so, uh, last two minutes, I'm just gonna show us my solution and then we can just view it and then we can transition to questions if that works for folks. I know we're coming up on time and it might just be better to do that. All right, uh, and so 
this the solution looks a whole lot actually there's a better one here this there you go uh, just like our earlier for loop, we have the response that we created, the sub variable, uh, then the, the power of beautiful soup is in its find all and find, uh, which is a method that helps us find a, an HTML object of a particular kind using parameters like class. Uh, and then it's a matter of looping through them and grabbing the text of the objects we want and then appending that text to some sort of iterable and then packaging up that iterable into something that can be analyzed in greater detail and so uh, i don't want to be redundant it's very similar to what we did with yelp just beautiful soup effectively replaces the way in which we use parameters in the api um, so with that dahlia if it works for you i'll turn it back over to the group and to the folks and we can see if there are any questions or any dialogue does that work yeah, sure. So guys, if you have any questions, feel free to type it now, either in the Q&A box or chat box. Um, one question is, can you share the entire beautiful soup color page? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like the actual documentation? Uh, I believe, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. And also the code. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That makes more sense. Yes. Uh, where did it go? I'm going to share the one to a, a, from a past conference that is fully completed. So I'll just share that one. Uh -huh. Chat panelists as attendees. Mm -hmm. Here is the beautiful soup all right there it is all right um yeah i also yeah thanks thank you so much i also think that might be helpful um can you tell us a little bit how do you apply those um th those tools in your specific business totally yeah so that's a great question uh so like, we'll just leave you open here or something uh, so the way we've been using web scraping at work is as follows. Uh, I work for a government agency. The government agency is responsible for contacting the businesses and getting them registered with us in the city. So they can either pay taxes or they can either be exempt from it. The way we get that information is from other government agencies, nine other government agencies to be exact. So government is slow. So you have one slow person getting information from other slow people or one slow organization getting information or leads from other slow people. So what we've been doing is scraping these directories. And right now we're, we haven't actually reached out to businesses, but we're bringing these directories into a, a, a scorecard is what we call it. So we get all these leads. We, we want to prioritize the leads because we don't have thousands of people to pursue businesses. And so we're using Yelp and Yellow Pages to uh, kind of help us prioritize which businesses we pursue based on our other leads. So basically we bring these together. If a lead shows up on our scrape directories along with other data sources, then it has more value. So that's how we've been using it right now to prioritize. We've also used it to build kind of like business intelligence tools internally and to talk about where there might be businesses. So we're not using it to solicit, but we are using, we've mapped some of this. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's most of the way to help prioritize and also to help learn. Oh, all right. Thank you so much. Um, sure. Is your, uh, there's a question from Jennifer. Is your work published to the public? Uh, the code that I have for work is not, but most of all of this I have, kind of redone in different ways and it is available through my github so i'll just share that and it has a bunch of sample code uh for these scrapes but that this explicit scripts from work uh we don't have that in any public repository all right thank you well i hope that the github link works yeah yeah Yeah, let me see. Um, All right. Yeah. 
here, I'll, since we've talked about soccer a good bit, I'll share this beautiful soup example where I, I scraped all of the players and mapped them, <laughs> or did a little plot. LAFC player web script. Um, one question from John Fincher. Uh, for those of us not in LA to come to your classes, where can we go to learn more? This is from John Fincher? Yeah. That's, that's like my uncle. He's taught me a lot of this. That's so funny. What's up, John? Thank you for tuning in. What was the question? I'm sorry. I was caught up with the name. Uh, for those of us not in LA to come to your classes, where can we learn more about that? Um, have awesome family members who will teach you stuff. That's definitely one place. Uh, go to ideas conferences, watch these webinars. Um, that's, here's something that has been extremely useful that uh, John contributes to himself, Real Python, great place for tutorials. Let this load up for a second. Uh, oh, here it is. You get a lot of awesome stuff free and then the, the paid layer, it's, it's very affordable for the knowledge you get. Uh, Data Camp is another great online platform. I have learned a lot, a lot, a lot. That's where I got really my foundation for, for Python all of last year was just taking these classes here. Uh, so those are some suggestions that folks, definitely the, all of these ideas webinars, the conferences, and if folks have other suggestions, uh, definitely please uh, share them with the group. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Juan. Uh, John, I hope your question is answered. So, all right, one more question from Corey. Uh, GA student in LA, uh, what will you be speaking on the conference? Which conference? Uh, uh, Are you, uh, the Corey, can you, can you please specify the question? A little bit elaborate, maybe? I think you might be thinking about the, the data science boot camp. Uh, oh, oh that, okay. I'm going to be a student. I'm there to learn, man. I got to work on my machine learning and my algorithm. So I will be definitely as a student. Dahlia, if you know about any speaker discounts, please let me know. I, I already got the discounted one earlier. Uh, but no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm there going to be strictly as a student. So I will see you there, Corey. Let, let me know who you are. And uh, it will be nice to say what's up. Oh yeah, he's a student there already. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's gonna be like more in a training session. So our, all our um, data science mentors and especially Jason, they're gonna show different techniques for machine learning and data science and even deep learning. So yeah, if, you, if you're if you still not considering or like maybe have some doubts, come or not, definitely come. <laughs> all right, so um, I guess, we don't have any questions right now, but probably people are still shy. So don't be shy because we still have about 10 minutes. Uh, well, could you think, could you please tell about um, how would you planning to uh, utilize those tools that you just explained, maybe in the different areas? For example, do you think it might be possible to find out all those um, businesses that are kind of avo avoiding taxes? Is that like your primary goal? Uh, it's, it's definitely my, so my primary goal is to make it so that businesses don't end up having to pay late fees and so that they can take advantage of the exemptions that we offer. And so what we end, what ends up happening is because we are so slow to get information, then people end up paying penalties because we don't reach them in time. So, um, you know, as, as crappy as it sounds, my work could definitely end up having people pay taxes, but I also learned this very selfishly. I, I had been web scraping using Excel before and Google Sheets, or really using Google Sheets specifically. Uh, and I, I wanted to learn how to scrape in Python because I, I, I'm falling in love with Python and it just made sense for the work that we do. Uh, but I could definitely, you know, especially now that we have technologies like Colab, like anyone with a Gmail address has a notebook to code in, right? You don't even have to worry about setting up any sort of environments locally. Uh, getting an Aconda and Jupyter Notebook going is very easy, but for some people, it is still like, what do I do? Here, you have uh, access to a notebook ready to go through a browser. So uh, I wanna really encourage like nonprofits, political groups, community movements, small businesses, you know, any page that 
has some sort of HTML type structure to its, its content, you can scrape with beautiful soup. Uh, any, any platform or website that offers APIs, you can use requests to, you know, form a web service and get that data. So I, I think as we as a community and a society become more data literate, pretty soon, you know, hopefully you don't have to be a full blown data scientist to like scrape a listing, right? Like I'm not a data scientist, I'm working towards it. Uh, but things like this are accessible to help organizations be more intelligent and more strategic perhaps in resource allocation and things like that. So that's what I aspire for us to go and for, for this technology to help outside of government. Thank you so much for, for the answer. Um, we have one question from Anthony. Uh, how do you get past capture? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think S Selenium is the name of, of the library that helps you kind of step through blockers like that. So I, I might be saying it wrong, Selenium, Selenium. Let me find it. I, there's actually a class that I have been delaying on real Python. Scraping. Here we go. I think it's in here. It might be this one. No, I think it's this one. I think it's Selenium. Selenium. That's, there you go. Yeah. 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 And it's not here. Well, Selenium. Here, here we go. Selenium. And so Selenium should let you step through things like that, like captures. And uh, my assumption, I might not be correct about that. Uh, but it is designed to help step through some of the traditional barriers that prevent you from scraping. Okay, so there is one more question from Saul Ventura. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that some websites use dynamic JavaScript, then it is hard to use scrapping techniques. Any alternative you might suggest? Uh, I'll give the same answer before. I think Selenium is, uh, is the first place to go and try that. Uh, I'll drop this tutorial in here. Great. Selenium. Yeah, you need, you need uh, to install a few things that will let you do like headless browsing, I think is what it's called. Um, I'm, I'm working my way through, through this one, but I'll point to Selenium. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks all for the question. Mm -hmm. Well, if you guys don't have any questions, um, I guess we're just about to finish our webinar. All right, one more question. Mm -hmm. Any non-Google alternative for online Jupyter notebooks? Oh, it's so cool. I know Alberto Roca as well. What's up, Alberto? Thank you for joining in. Uh, Non-Google alternatives for online Jupyter notebooks. Um, I, I'm not aware of any. Uh, I kind of discovered Colab a few months ago, maybe now a year ago when they started rolling it out in beta. I'm personally not aware of any. If anyone has any other recommendations, uh, feel free to share them. I'm sorry, Alberto, no, no tips for you on that one from my end. Yeah, okay. Anyone? All right, any, anyone? No. <laughs> well, I, pretty much everyone is using GitHub, yeah. Just mm -hmm. pulling and uh, requests and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Okay, sure. You can just have it right on GitHub. Yeah. Uh, all right. One more question. Oh, this is not actually a question. So you can install Jupyter locally and share the actual notebook uh, via any means necessary. Oh, yeah, that works too. All right. So. Guys, if you have any more questions, we still have like three minutes. Okay, someone found Intel DevCloud. It, uh, it lets you use Jupyter Notebook free if you sign up. Yeah. It's very good. All right, thank you so much, Cliff. All right, I guess this is it. So thank you everyone for joining in and thank you Juan again you've been with us for about three years now yeah uh, very cool uh, thank you for having me sure so again uh hope to see you on February yeah I guess I'm coming too hmm. all right then uh I'm gonna pull up the small polling so I guess everyone gonna see it right now 
Yeah, I'm like launching it right now. So it's just a small poll for us, just for a small feedback from our audience. Yeah, so if you have time, please vote. All right, so this is pretty much it. The video, the YouTube link gonna be available on Monday. So don't forget to check it out and see you next week for the next webinar. And if you haven't done so, please join ideas.org and subscribe for our news, uh, for our weekly newsletter. All right, thank you so much everyone. And thank you, Juan, bye. Yes, thank you all, bye. Thanks, John, thanks, Alberto. Bye, Dalia. Bye.